and seeing our loved ones again. But nothing else matters except for the one who made it possible for me to be there. First place I want to say is him. He's the one that prepares us a place. He's the one that sustains us. Matthew 6 in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, Jesus says the Father knows what we need and he provides it. Does he know what you need today? Does the Father know your needs right now? Does he know each need that you have right now? Does he? He knows them even if you haven't shared them with anybody. He knows them if nobody else knows about it. He knows, as a child of God, he knows what you need right now. And that's turned around. He said, why are you stressing out? Why are you worrying? The Father knows what you need. If he takes care of the birds in the sky, grass in the field, he'll take care of you. The Father will sustain us. Jesus says so. He makes that possible. So salvation, that new life, is only found in the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation, Paul says. Because if you don't, because if you're, because if your foundation is not Jesus Christ, then you don't know the one I'm talking about. You don't know the, you don't know the Lord. We started a brand new uh, Bible study on Friday. Brand new Bible study on Friday, talk, and it talks about the what it, it's called the Christian atheist. And what's a Christian atheist? It was a good one, wasn't it, Dolores? It was a good one. It basically saying a Christian atheist is a person who believes in God, but they live as if He doesn't exist. And there's a lot of those folks out there. They live, they believe in God, and yeah, I believe in God, but they live as if he doesn't even, that he's not real. And here we have to understand that salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. He is the real deal. And if, and if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you know the Jesus I'm talking about, and he is your cornerstone. Amen. Every believer builds their life on him. But then he goes to verse 12, where he talks about all believers must choose what they build into their life. He says in verse 12, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw. Okay, so basically what he's saying is that the new churches, the new, these new churches are going to have a choice. They're going to have a choice of what they build their church and their life upon. Jesus Christ is their foundation. What are they going to put on top of it? What are they going to put on top of it? When he leaves, he... He can't, you know, he's not going to baby them. He's not going to, you know, and chide them. And, uh, he's, he's just encouraging them. Look, you need to determine today, what are you going to build your life on? What are you going to build your life with? Jesus Christ is what you build your life on. What are you going to build your life with? What's going to go on top of that foundation? And he gives us a list here of building materials. You need to choose which building materials they're going to use because it matters. Building materials matters. Just ask the three little pigs. You know the story, right? Three pigs, three building materials. One survived, right? What's the moral of the story? Breaks rule. <laughs> Actually, there's probably a whole lot more than that, okay? But the reality is, is that wood and, wood and straw don't work very well, right? But look here. You see a progression from gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. First of all, Gold, silver, and precious stones. Well, these are the best building materials. Paul starts with the best. The best. You know what, you know what this represents? This, these stones represent a person that's building a life of faithfulness, obedience, and love for Jesus Christ. This is a person who is spiritually prepared and spiritually purposed. They say, I'm going to build my life with the best stuff. I am going to build my life with faithfulness and obedience to Jesus Christ. Because believers have to make a daily choice. I say daily choice. Every day we are choosing what we're building on that foundation of Jesus Christ. Yesterday you might have used precious stones. You might have used gold. Tomorrow you might use straw. You're like, well, I'm not planning on using straw. Nobody plans on doing that, right? Nobody plans on having what do you call it, an off day in the faith. You know what I'm talking about when I say an off day in the faith? You messed up. You fell into temptation. You made you said too many words you shouldn't. You made some poor choices. At the end of the day, you're like, yeah, yeah, don't want to do that again. Right? Am I the only one that hasn't happens to? I mean, seriously? Come on. 
You know, every day we have to choose what we're going to build with. And here, Paul says the gold, silver, precious stones. He says we got to choose to use the best stuff. What, what is the best stuff? And I'll be honest with you. You know, when I was preparing this, you know, I, I, I had all kinds. Of, I mean, my notes were everywhere. If you saw my, if you saw my desk, well, actually, you can't see my desk. It's covered, covered in notes. <laughs> I need to clean it. But anyway, uh, gentleman that's here today, sitting on the back, he gave me on Sunday, Father's Day, uh, uh, an outline. My dad, one of a couple of my dad's sermons. He, he preached those sermons when I wasn't here, sir. Uh, I uh, that was back in, and I wasn't even around. But but I, was, I appreciate that. When I was reading these outlines, I'm like. Man, this is good stuff. I had to incorporate some of that in here. My, my dad's a preacher, in case you didn't know. Uh, he hasn't preached in a while, but he's, he's a good preacher. Some of y'all, if you've heard him, you know what I'm talking about. But here, some of this, so, so I'm not saying this is mine, but this is good. I had to incorporate it. So what are some of the precious stones, the gold, the silver? First of all, conviction. Standing firm on the truth of God's word. You know what I call that? That's what you call the hill to die on. You know what I'm talking about, the hill to die on? You ever everybody use that phrase with you, the hill to die on? You never heard it? Okay, let me explain that, okay? I can explain it, okay. Because this years ago, this is what my dad used to tell me. He said, son, that's not a hill to die on. Basically, in, in a military term, a hill to die on is basically you're in battle and you have a sword, okay? Is this something you're gonna go into and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna die for? You're willing to, to sacrifice your life for this. Some things that you're you, you should be willing to do that. For the, for the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's a hill to die on. Okay, some of the little, some of the things of the faith, some of the things that we deal with in life, those are not hills to die on. Okay, because in, in, in this room, there's probably a number of number of, uh, of, of of opinions and beliefs regarding the Word of God that may differ than, than others and may differ to me. And those aren't necessarily hills to die on. You know what? Because when we get to heaven, all those things that we might disagree on ain't going to matter as long as we knew Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. As long as he was the one that made it possible, as long as he was the one that we gave our life to, we trusted our life with, and we and we got forgiveness of our sins. Because if nothing else matters. What we believe about Genesis ain't going to matter. What we believe about Revelation ain't going to matter. What we believe about this, that, and the other, all that stuff ain't going to matter when we get to heaven. As long as you knew Jesus, you knew the Jesus I know, that's mattering. That's what matters. Because when we get to heaven, none of that stuff's going to matter because you're going to be like, oh, okay. Because as one of my one of my Bible college professors is saying, you know what? When I get to heaven, I'll follow it. Because why? Because I'm in heaven. <laughs> I'm not gonna have a problem. <laughs> That's right. It's not a hill to die on. Some things are conviction. We've got to take a stand on the truth of God's word. Because if you don't take a stand on the truth of God's word, guess what? You're gonna falter. You're going to fail. Truth is not relative, by the way. Why? Because Jesus says, I am the truth. And the truth never changes. Never. Truth never changes. We've got to have conviction. Believers in Christ have to have conviction, but they also need to have character. What we are individually, that is our reputation. We ought to have a life of integrity. Be who you're supposed to be. Be who you say you are. Be the same person today that you are tomorrow that you are next week. The same person that I'm looking at today needs to be the same person I see in the Burger King drive through All the week. I'm going to be in the Burger King drive through You see me there. Then. Well, you ain't going to see me there. I haven't been there. Anyway, the point is that you're the same person everywhere you go. You're the same. Nothing. Your, your character matters. What? And I'm not talking about, well, we can't work. What matters is your character matters because of what he thinks of you. Amen. Don't worry about what other people think of you. Worry about what he thinks of you. Him, other people, you know, if you're trying to be a people pleaser, that is a that is like trying to catch a grease pig with one hand. <laughs> it's, it's hard enough with two, right? So any people pleasers in the house today? Some of y'all in recovery, right? Maybe some people. You know what? How hard it is. You can't please everybody. You can't do it. You might please this person, you make that person mad. You just can't. But your character matters, and what matters really is what he thinks about you. Your character matters in a life of integrity, life of compassion and love. Believers must be known for their love for one another. Goodness, if we're supposed to be known for something right now, it's that we are a people of compassion. 
There's a lot of hurt and a lot of pain out there right now. And there's a lot of churches that are trying to meet needs to make that happen. Maybe you haven't been here on Wednesday mornings like I have. But this place is, hop this, this place is hopping more than an IGA on a Saturday morning. <laughs> some of y'all are like, what's an IGA? <laughs> okay, some of y'all are the grocery store. The point is, is that our food pantry ministry has just exploded. Amen. I mean, and I appreciate all those volunteers that come out. I mean, our, we're, there is nothing in our budget for food pantry. You can look at our church budget. There's nothing in it. It's a self-supported ministry. It's through donations, through, through people giving food. As a matter of fact, we had another donation on Friday. I mean, it's self-supported, but the people that come in, we get opportunities to minister and love on them. It doesn't matter who, what they look like, where they come from. It doesn't matter how old or young they are. It doesn't matter what color skin they have. If they need it, if they have a need, we're going to do it. They're hungry, although that might, is probably true, but because they, we love Jesus, and Jesus says, do it, because, you, because I love them too. It's an opportunity right now for our church. We can't do a whole, a lot of our ministries are kind of on, on hold right now. And I don't like it any more than you do. Trust me. I don't. It's hard to have lost so much on hold and, and kind of playing a waiting game. But the food pantry ministry, but that's not on hold at all since we got that up and running. It's been like on gangbusters. And we have met so many needs and I'm grateful for that. But it's but compassion. Believers in Jesus Christ need to be known for their love for one another. We're supposed to love one another. Doesn't matter what they look like. Doesn't matter how much money they got. Doesn't matter how old or young they are. Doesn't matter if they speak your language. We're supposed to be people of compassion. Amen. And it needs to be illustrated. You need to, it needs to be spoken. It needs to be lived out in the flesh. And yeah, even digitally. Because I'll be honest with you, look at all social media. There's a lot of hate out there. There's a lot of negativity out there, a lot of personal attacks. And just about every week, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hiding some of my Facebook friends because I don't like what I'm saying. And I'll give them a break. And I thought, I could unfollow them. I'll try to be nice. Have some mercy. So I don't unfollow them. I just take a break. <laughs> so I don't see them for a while. Simply because, like, you know what? I don't really, you know, sometimes folks don't always post what they should because it doesn't really speak compassion. It's not very loving. You know, if you're, if you're online and you're posting stuff that are putting people down, and you're a believer in Christ, that's wrong. I'm sorry. We can agree and disagree on stuff, and we, we all sometimes, sometimes there's differing opinions and stuff, and some of them are very polarizing. I get it. But the reality is, is that what you post on for, is there forever. I was sharing it last week. The thing is, is that that's, that that's going to come back on you. We're going to be held accountable for that. Okay? And so if we're going to be a person of people that builds with the right stones, we've got to have compassion. And we also need to have commitment. Commitment to Christ. Are you committed to your Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, no matter what, you're serving him. No matter what, he says go, and you say where, and you go. Committed. Committed to Christ. Committed to your marriage. If you're married today, you need to be committed. Some of you are like, yeah, they need to commit me because I'm married. No. <laughs> no, you need to be committed. If you're married, be committed in that marriage. Committed to your family. Folks, your kids need to know that you're committed to them. No matter what the age. You talk, I, heard, I, I said this last week. Committed to our family. And ultimately, we all as believers in Christ need to be committed to sharing the gospel. Because we're the church and we got to take the gospel out. And, it, and if there's one thing that has hope, it's the gospel. I mean, you see all the you see all the sadness out there right now. You see all the worry and the stress and anxiety. You see it everywhere. You see it on people's faces. You see it at the store. You see it online. There's a lot of anxiety out there. Can I can I get a witness? Yeah. But here's the thing: we've got to be committed to Jesus Christ because we have the greatest gift of all. We have the hope of our faith and. The to share it because somebody you might run into needs to know that they need to know that Jesus loves them and it's our job to be committed to share building materials wood hay and, and straw what are those these are the worst building materials like I said ask the three pigs they'll tell you one thing that all three of these have in common they all burn 
every one of them, is flammable. They all burn up. What is this a life of? This is a, these are building materials where somebody builds their life of something, of a life that looks like they never really bought in to the mission of the gospel. They never really sold out to Christ. And they're spiritually, they spiritually coast it. You know anybody that's like this? Well, I got saved. I, I got baptized. I joined the church. And now I can just sit and I can just wait for Jesus to come and get me. Anybody like that? Have you run anybody like that? My very first church, I told you that. My very first church, I was there three months. Church member called me after church. My very first pastor back in 2006. Pastor, I'm glad that you're here. Just want to let you know, don't ever ask me to do anything. I just want to come and I just want to sit. I'm like, okay. That was a drive-by. I'm like, I barely know the guy. I've been here three months and okay, he doesn't want to do anything. Thanks for making that very clear. But I don't like visitors. Okay, I won't do that either, okay? So he doesn't want guests and he doesn't want to do anything. So my next question I wanted to ask is, are you giving anything? Are you tithing? But I didn't want to know because, frankly, I don't want to know. <laughs> the thing is, is that these materials, this is the person that they're just coasting. They're just, they just, they never gospel. They never buy into the mission because, frankly, believers in Jesus Christ have a mission. We have a mission. You saw the video. The mission. What's the mission? Keep expanding the kingdom of Jesus Christ until he returns. We are here to expand the, the, the gospel, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, until he returns. We don't know when he's returning. It could be until you die. And then when you die, your mission's over. Okay? Mission accomplished. But right now, we're still on mission. We're all supposed to be missionaries. You heard the definition. It's not, missionaries are not just people that go to foreign lands. You can be a missionary right in your neighborhood. You can be a missionary in your family. You can, be a, you can be a missionary anywhere. because Why? Because you carry the gospel of Jesus Christ and you run into people all the time that don't know him. Guess what? You can be a missionary. And, and connecting people, connecting with people relationally makes that work. Okay? So one of these kind of building materials that Paul talks about. Well, over in another, another letter he wrote in Romans chapter 1, he gives a list of, of, of types of building materials. Now, this list, these are all characteristics of people who have turned away from God but at the same time, a lot of but God's people can also pick up on these tendencies as well. And you know it when you hear it. First of all, what are these types of building materials? Wood, hay, and straw. Morally unstable. A person who is morally unstable. Romans 1 says, an unrighteous, evil, envy, deceit, arrogant. Morally unstable. Basically, I don't have any right, wrong, what's that? It's all blurred together. I'll just, uh, you know, it's right for me. It's right for you, whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, is, 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 is truth relative? I said, no, it's not. Right is right and wrong is wrong. We knew that from the Garden of Eden. Morally unstable, wayward, like an unanchored boat in a storm. They're all over the place. There's no conviction about anything. And the question that might be, yeah, well, that changes by the day, James 1.8. They just kind of wishy-washy. You know what I'm talking about? Just kind of wishy-washy. Today, I'm this. Tomorrow, I'm this. You know what I'm talking about? I work for people like that. Call them hypocrites. <laughs> hypocrites. A hypocrite, somebody says one thing, does another. People that lack integrity, you can't trust them. You can't trust them with anything, and you can't trust them for any reason. First of all, lack of integrity. And also, from verses of Romans 1. These are folks sometimes known for ungodly speech and ungodly lifestyles. Basically, wood, hay, and straw. You, you, you Christ don't do stuff like that. Yeah, they do. Charles Stanley, one of his books, uh, y'all know who Charles Stanley is. He wrote a book called Casual Christianity. Okay? Old term. He called it carnal Christianity. Carnal Christians. Basically, somebody who identifies with Jesus Christ, they, they say, they, and, and I think that's what that video talked about, we don't know, we watched on now Friday. Basically, somebody says they, they belong to Jesus Christ, but they live as, they, they, they look like the world. You can't really tell the difference. They don't look like a follower of Jesus Christ. They kind of blend in real good, okay? Car, he called it a carnal Christian. 
They're known for their ungodly speech and ungodly lifestyle. Basically, the things that come out of their mouth and the, and the way they live their life doesn't look like a life that's full of Christ. And trust me, people need to see Christ in us. They see enough of the world out there with everybody else. They need to see Jesus in us. When somebody looks at you and I, they should see Jesus. And if they don't, we have failed. If they don't see Jesus in me, I have failed. If I have moments where, where you look at me and you don't see Jesus and you see the flesh coming out, I have failed in my mission. I have failed. So all these characteristics, these are people, this is characteristics of lost people. But believers who build their house, they build their life, they build their legacy out of stuff that don't last and don't matter. That's the stuff that's not, it's not going to last. Because followers of Jesus Christ, we're, we're called to build our life upon the foundation of Jesus Christ with the best stuff. If you were to build a house, would you care what the walls were made of? Even if you had the best foundation in the world. I mean, you've got a, you've got a slab that's not going anywhere. I mean, it's 12, it's, it's 20 foot deep, whatever. You know what? That rock ain't going anywhere. You've got a great foundation, but you're okay with it. You know, um, you know, throwing out, you know, getting bite, you know, getting toothpicks and then tie them all together. You're okay with that, right? Because you got the best foundation ever, man. That, it ain't going anywhere. But does it really matter what you build? Yes, it does. Paul says it does matter. It does matter. The found the, the foundation of Jesus Christ, that best stuff, that's the stuff like the fruit of the spirit that Paul talked about in another one of his letters. We're supposed to be living out the fruit of the spirit. Also, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. In another letter, he said. That's what the best stuff looks like. Living Jesus' way for Jesus, in Jesus, it's all about him. You know, you can go out in the public and you can say Buddha and you can say Allah and you can say Muhammad and you can say all the names of these other new age stuff. Well, you know, they don't get all upset and stuff like that. They're like, eh, whatever you want to do. It's not for me, but whatever. You mention the name of Jesus, and the mere mention of the name of Jesus, that breaks conviction right down to the heart. You say the name of Jesus, and buddy, people don't like that. That's like putting salt in a wound. Don't say his name. Believers in Christ ought to be, ought to be building with the best stuff. But, but And you say, well, why? Because it matters in eternity. Look at verse 13. Each one's work will become obvious, for the day will disclose it. Because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test the quality of each one's work. All believers will have to give an account for what they build. One day, every single person in this room, it will be standing before Jesus Christ. We're going to be standing before him, and we're going to have to give an account for how we lived our life here. Romans 14, 12 says this. First, Hebrews 4.36, Hebrews 4.13. Every one of them say the same thing by different writers. We're all the count for how we lived our life here. We're going to stand before him and we're going to have to tell and we're going to have to tell him. He's going to know. He's going to know how we lived before you got saved. That's all forgiven, right? Because the blood of Jesus Christ took care of that. Praise God. It's gone. And we won't have to give account for that because we've been forgiven of that. But the stuff since we become a believer in Christ that's the stuff we're going to have to give account for. Basically, what have you done with what I gave you? I gave you. You see, you see when it says tried by fire, basically it's, it's going to be put into, it's almost like a furnace type of thing. Basically, the picture is, is that we're going to put all this stuff and we'll see the value of your life. We're going to put it in and we're going to test this and really and see what lasts. Because if you put gold and silver and precious stones in the flames, it's going to survive. It will. With wood, hay, and straw, what does that happen? What happens to that? All that is is kindling. <laughs> okay? It burns up super fast. It burns up. So the question that, that Paul's asking here is, will there be anything that we do with our life that survives the testing? Will we have anything to show for the life we have lived here? Because Paul says if we've done well, he says this in verse 14, if we've done well, we'll receive a reward. Now, some of you might be thinking, we, we don't, we're not really living our life to get a reward. You know, this is not like, you know, uh, 
your your kid cleans a room and you give them a hundred bucks. If you do that, shame on you. That's just wrong. Okay, they should be doing it anyway. And never mind. I'm not going to go there. But my point is that you don't reward it. You know, but but so we don't we don't do stuff for Jesus to get a reward. You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying today? The primary the primary reason why that we serve God is because we love Him for what He did for us. He's already done too much for us. He doesn't deserve, we don't deserve anything else from his hand, if the, if the truth be known. But the reality is that we will, if we have done well, we will receive a reward. Now, I don't know what that looks like. We don't, have, we don't have an idea what that looks like. But on that day, if there's anything left after the testing, we will receive a reward that we can lay at Jesus' feet. Jesus told a parable in Luke 19 about the unjust servant. And he gave all these servants different amounts of money. And he went away. And he came back after a long time. He said, what y'all, what you three servants, what'd you do with my money? And the first two servants, they took their money and they, and they made money. They, they, made, they, they made money for their, for their master. For, they made money for their employer. And, and, they, and they, you have, you made me money. You did good. I gave you this. I gave you five and you gave, and you made 10. I gave you, I gave you two and you made five. Then he comes to the last one. And he only had one. And he didn't do nothing with it. You know what he did? He took it. You know, and the guy's like, why'd you bury it? Said, well, you know what? I, one. I figured what, you know, you're you're not really fair anyway. So I just figure what that, you know, what's the what's the point? And then and, 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 and the, the master was like, you could have at least put it in a bank and got some interest on it. I mean, come on. But you didn't. And he, and, he, and, he, and that servant got punished for that. So if we've not done well, everything that we do will burn nothing to show for what we did with our life. There's not going to be any reward if there's nothing to show for it. You see, you might be thinking, well, does that mean that I'm not going to go to heaven if I don't live a good Christian life? No. How Going to heaven is determined by your, how you, your relationship with Jesus Christ. This, our faith is not a works-based faith. You understand what I'm saying? We don't do stuff just to get on God's good side. You hear know what I'm saying? Salvation is, a, is, is based on faith alone, faith in Jesus Christ. But since we've, since we've become a child of God, our hearts are supposed to be We're called to be on mission serving him. And so on a day when we give an account, if we got nothing to show for it, well, we're going to be standing our empty hand and it's going to be embarrassing but we're still going to be in heaven. So we're not going to have anything to present the master, but we're going to have empty hands. Do you want empty hands? Are you going to want to say, well, um, I guess I got nothing. So the reality is that we want to have something to put in his hands. He says, if you've not done well, there's not going to be any rewards, but your salvation is secure. He says that. It says that in verse 15, but it'd be like an escape through a fire. It's like going to heaven on the skin of your teeth. That's basically how you get into heaven. You didn't really do anything, but you but you're in heaven because you trusted Jesus Christ and faith in him. So so here's the challenge here. When we stand before Jesus Christ, this is kind of the legacy I've talked about, the stones of legacy. We stand before Christ, and you and I will for sure. Every person in here will stand before him. I will, you will. What is our life going to say to him? Because he's going to know what we build our life with. Did we use the gold, the silver, the precious stones, or did we build out of wood, hay, straw? Did we do anything that matters? There's only what's done for, for Christ is what's going to last. And so do you want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? I don't know about you, but that's what I want to hear from my, from my, from, from my Savior. I want to hear you did a good job, boy. Proud of you. I put it in layman's terms, whatever. I don't know what he's going to say to me. But I just want to put a smile on his face and say, you did good. You done good. As my dad would say, you done good. That's what I ought to hear. Because the last thing I want is to be standing at the hand and, and he looks at me going, man, what a waste. You had all that time. You had all those opportunities I put in front of you. You had all those, all those spheres of influence that you had. And you did nothing. You didn't do a thing for me. Such a waste. It's like a wasted life. 
don't know about you, but that's a whole, that's one of crawling or a rock moment. And there ain't going to be any way to do that then. And so if you don't want that, then make your life matter because the stones of legacy matter because I don't want to have any regrets, do you? I don't want to have any regrets. So what matters here on earth is important as far as what we build on that foundation. Billy Graham says this in one of his books, our days are numbered. One of the primary goals in our lives should be to prepare for our last day. The legacy we leave is not just in our possessions, but in the quality of our lives. What preparations should we be making now? The greatest waste in all of our earth, which cannot be recycled or reclaimed, is our waste of the time that God has given us each day. Did Billy Graham waste his life? No, he didn't. And so the challenge here is today is that you have to examine where you're at. What are you building your life out of? By using the gold, the silver, the precious stones? Are you building it out of something that's going to survive the testing? Or are you building out of things that are just, they're here today, gone next week, <laughs> maybe tomorrow? And see, I don't know what you're building your life on. I, I, I don't know that. But we have to examine our life, and that's what Paul is trying to get this church to do. Look, you need to, the foundation is Jesus Christ, but what are you building on that foundation? Because what we put on it matters. Right now, each and every day, each one of us is building on that foundation. We're adding another, every day is another brick or another piece of wood or another layer of straw. Every day is another piece of building material. You hear what I'm saying? Every day is another piece of building material. What, what, every day we have to make a choice. What are we building our life with? Because see, those stones, I, I want my legacy to be one where it's, uh, I mean, it's, there's, there's not a straw, single piece of straw or wood. It's all the good stuff. It may not be all gold, but it'll survive the testing, amen? That's what I want. I want it to survive and have something to show for what I've done here. I'm 50 years old. I'll be 51 in a month and a half. I don't say that a lot. No, that, that, that doesn't leave the building, by the way. I don't, I don't, I used to like birthdays. I don't like them now. Um, but the point is, is that I don't know how much time God has given me that's left. I, I don't know. I don't have a clue. But I know one thing. Each day is a gift. And if I have today, that's the day I have. Until we decide to take me home, that's the day I have. I can't do nothing about yesterday. Yesterday's done. It's gone. I, there's nothing I can do about it. Whatever I built on those days, it's done. But what I can do is right here, now, in the present, and then I can determine in the future how I'm going to build my life. What building materials are we going to choose to use? We all have legacy. You and I, each one, have those legacy stones. The question is, what are they made of today? Where are we at today? We all have to make a choice of what's going to last and what's not. And when we stand before Christ, what does that look like? We strive to say, wait, maybe you should wake up every morning and say, is God going to be pleased with me today? What do I need to do to hear, well done, a good, good and faithful servant for today? And then maybe live your life that day for that. Don't worry about tomorrow because you can't do nothing about tomorrow. You stop here yet. But you can today. You know what I'm saying? Choose today. Choice. Will you trade the wood, the hay, and the straw for the gold, silver, Precious stones. Will you trade it? Trade what the world has to offer for what Jesus has. That's all. That's what matters. Amen. That's what matters. Nothing else matters. Jesus and His mission. That's what matters. Nothing else matters. Where are you at today? You have to decide. Father, ah, uh, Lord, I know that there are moments. Lord, there are days.